um, every time there there's a need in the congregation, we we try to incorporate and and, and it, it's your church, not ours, and so we are trying to. Uh, uh, make it the best possible church for, for satisfy all of our needs. You know, something that many people are not aware of um, is that um, I guess I can use the word secret. It's just uh, something that we don't we haven't talked about publicly. But oftentimes uh, we become aware mm -hmm. of a need uh, that's let's call it an, an emergency need for financially. And um, what we've done um, up until now is um, discuss it, and it turns out that usually there's one of us that has uh, has an abundance and, and uh, surplus, and we, we can spare some and, and uh, uh, come to the, the aid of someone who, who needs some help. So this has been what we've been doing behind the scenes. We've never talked about it, and I'm a little bit uncomfortable even talking about it now. But I, I, I feel I have to tell you about it because of this announcement I'm making. And that is, uh, um, you know, I'm very, very sensitive that one of the reasons we're not doing a public prayer, you might think this is an extreme reaction, but uh, Jesus said to pray in your closet and don't do these flowery prayers that just to draw men's attention and get praise for yourself. So I've always been self-conscious about that. That's why I don't do the public prayer. I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to put on a performance. So we, I'm trying to follow the scriptures in everything we do, and, and the, the scriptures uh, has something to say about charity. Now, recently, um, um, one of the brethren, uh, said that uh, I, I would like to, to uh, help financially support the church here. And uh, what can, how do I do that? And I said, well, we don't have any kind of a system in place for that. But let me, let me talk to uh, the elders and uh, we'll, we'll see if we can figure out some way of accomplishing that. So we hashed it around. We've talked about donate buttons and PayPal's and establishing some kind of an account and, and then distributing the money. And, and, and uh, uh, but I personally have always been very uncomfortable with that kind of a thing. Not, I'm not saying that it's not valuable and, and valid to do, but in, uh, in my case, I, I always want to avoid any kind of either a legitimate accusation or even just a, um, the ability for someone to say we're, it's filthy lucre. They're just, look at, they're just in there for the money. Uh, I know that that turns off all of us when we watch these TV preachers and stuff and all they want to do is raise money and they're growing rich. And so we, we don't want to ever fall into that, that trap. But um, I, let's look at a couple of verses here that apply to this before, before I go any further. And then I want to get everybody's feedback on this. Um, I showed these to Brother Ben. I posted him from, I don't know if you can display them or not, but first let me look at uh, um, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Uh, well, one thing I forgot I wanted to mention is that uh, tithing, don't, don't confuse what I'm saying today is about any attempt to, to incorporate tithing. Uh, tithing is not a New Testament concept. It's, uh, tithing was simply a 10% a tax to support the theocratic government of Israel and the, the Levitical priesthood. That was the purpose of it. And people who will try to apply the 10% tithe into the church today don't understand that. Well, uh, but there is a method of charity in the church. And Paul says that uh, it's not, uh, we should not do it grudgingly or of necessity, but we should be a cheerful giver. Now, I want to mention a verse in James uh, chapter 2, <laughs> that famous chapter 2, and verse 15. Now, the verses preceding and following this verse uh, are, a, all of us have different ways of interpreting all those verses. And, and not, that's not what I want to talk about now. I want to focus only on this one verse. Uh, 
If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, to the body, what doth it profit? Um, I hope none of us are guilty of that, that when we find out that someone is uh, uh, in destitute of daily food, that we don't just say for them, well, go in peace, be warmed and filled, and I'll, I'll pray for you. Uh, but we will, if we're able, if we have abundance, that we will come and take to their aid. Uh, that's what we have been doing privately um, um, for the last couple of years. Uh, we, we, we've, we've all done it, and uh, I'm not here to try to get any credit for anybody, but I'm, I'm only saying it because I'm going to, I want everybody to understand, I'm not asking you to do anything that we have not already been doing ourselves for the last two years. So how do we go about doing it? And I, uh, I was not happy with any of the ideas that we came up with as far as establishing an account and asking people to you know, send money to the account and then deciding where to disperse it. I was not happy with that. It, it, uh, I felt that there's too many potential problems and, and even, um, even if we're completely pure and innocent in all of our motives and decisions, uh, we're, we're still subject to accusations. So uh, I, I realized, I think the Lord revealed it to me, that um, we already have a program in place, a charitable program in place. All we need to do is get more people involved in it. We've been doing it. When we find there's a need, uh, I personally will either help or I, if I'm not able, I'll tell Matthias or Renee or Daniel or Ben. Or, and we'll, we'll find somebody, try to find somebody who is able to help with this need. And that's how we've been doing it. And I, it's worked. And I think that uh, this is the way to go forward. So uh, um, this new program, Charity and the Church of the Eternally Secure, uh, we're just going to ask that when, when we find that there's a need, um, that, like in the chat room right now, someone just expressed uh, they're in some kind of a financial distress. What are we gonna do? Just ignore that and pray about it? Or are we gonna try to find a solution? Uh, I'm going to say that we should try to find a donor for every need. And uh, I, it, the, the donor, the, the, the solving the problem cannot always fall on me or the us here on the panel. We're getting to be a fairly large congregation now. I know that some of the people over the years have said, how can I help financially? And we've never asked or, or wanted to even do any of these things before. But now it's time to say, um, if you're someone that uh, uh, has surplus and uh, you, you, you can be a cheerful giver, then let us know. And what we will do is uh, make a note of that. And then when someone else, we find out that someone else has an emergency need. I'm not talking about taking in money to uh, support someone's lifestyle and, uh, you know, given income. No, none of us are drawing any kind of a proper income, and we, we never will. But I'm saying if anybody in the congregation has an emergency need, like Liam just said he couldn't, he didn't have any food for communion. And I thought, I wrote, I said, oh, were you saying there's no food in your house? I'm, I don't, if he doesn't have food, we need to get some food there for him. So if anybody in the congregation has an emergency need, you need to let us know. And if we have somebody who's already stepped forward and said that I have a surplus, if there's a need, let me know. What we will do is we will match you up. We will basically facilitate. That's all we're going to do. That way we're not collecting money. We're not distributing it. We're never going to be tempted to, to maybe misuse it. So we, uh, I feel that this is the, the way to go forward. Um, so I Brother guess. Lee? Yeah, so I, I'm done. Go ahead. I, I wanted to. Uh... Uh, follow up with what you said. I think that is a good common sense approach. Um, the Bible does state that the saints come first. The saints come first. Uh, I do have a gentleman. He says he's homeless. He's shown up on my channel. I have helped as much as this group, me, Luke, Matthias, Daniel, as much as we get accused, 
like Brother Luke said, we don't tell you we do it. But many times we have said, hey, so-and-so, like the lady's house burned down. Or so-and-so uh, uh, doesn't have uh, a coat for the winter. We have actually gotten together. Some people sent gift cards, some clothes, some money. We have done this before. And as he said, this is the way we've dealt with it. Um, and uh, we, I think the way Brother Luke's saying to do it is good. And like he said, this is for emergency. We don't want anybody starving or not having warm clothes um, or, you know, not not having a place to lay their head in the church. Um, the gentleman, Luke, that I'm talking about, he put a comment in his PayPal on my, and I allowed him to do that, on my uh, video for the live stream Saturday. And I'm concerned for him because he says he's in a Methodist church and that salvation is the process. He's in the process of being saved. So this is particularly of importance to me, although uh, the finances are for the body of Christ first, the brethren. We can also show kindness and, and ch Christian charity to people to show them that we're faith alone. Yes, it's only about trusting Christ, but that doesn't mean we don't believe in living in love and godly living the way Jesus told us to. We do promote that. Uh, and so sometimes uh, love is the loudest way to speak. Like Paul says, without love, we're clanging symbols. And Carrie is the one, Brother Luke, that had a financial need. She said, pray for her finances and help for her and her son. Um, she said she'd like to tell us what happened at some time mm -hmm. but she was the one praying for it. also stephanie wants to try to get scholarships or something to finish her college so let's pray that she can get uh, funding or loans or scholarships for to finish her school because she's going to graduate i think she said in a few months mm -hmm. and that'd be great mm -hmm. also one prayer request we missed was megan's having uh, eye surgery tomorrow so we want to uh, pray for her also mm -hmm. Okay, I see that um, um, there's a lot of interesting comments I'm seeing so far. Um, many people um, think it's it, this is a very good idea. Uh, Church for the Truth says we must have a vetting system. Uh, yeah, but here's here's the thing that uh, we uh, let's suppose that Church for the the Truth contacts us and says um, I have a surplus take down my name when there's a need contact me and what we'll do then is just say well um, we'll contact we'll, we'll get the two parties together and then church for the truth could determine uh when they are if if that's a need that they want to uh, address and so that way it's done only between the two parties nobody else will know about it except me that got the two parties together and uh, the whole congregation, the world won't know. It will be done in private, in the closet, as Jesus asks us to do all things. The left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. So uh, that way, you vet it yourself. If you're a donor, you determine yourself if this is a legitimate need that you want to, to help with. Hey, Brother Daniel. Well, let me, uh, before we get off of talking to Brother Daniel, I want to get the feedback from Matthias and Ben. Matthias? Yeah, I love it. Um, <laughs> I think that's a great idea because uh, having our hands on money was something I didn't, I didn't like. Uh, I didn't like that idea at all. Um, and uh, it also um, it can bring together also relationship too. I mean, please, uh, those who need help, don't feel bad for bringing it to our attention um, and the donors uh, when uh, when we match them up um, it can actually even bring closer not just communication but edifying and relationship among them so uh, I think it's a good way to bring us as a family together I think that it's great uh, to have the vetting system be the Holy Spirit and as people uh 
uh, interact with one another. Uh, I mean, it's all done personally. So, and then I certainly like how there could certainly be no allegations um, thrown around. Like, oh, they're just doing it for the money. It's, it's like, oh, no. no. Um, but I would say that uh, both donors and those who are looking for help, um, both contact Church of the Eternally Secure email. Just send it, uh, send it there. And I would say that we actually make an announcement at least once a month about this just about sending uh, either knowledge that you are in a position to help others. Maybe you weren't before and now you are, or maybe you didn't need help before. And this month you might need a little help keeping the power bill on. Um, so yeah, send them. And like Luke said, it'll all be private. Uh, all of us, if, um, if we're in the position to help, we'd be glad to help. And any other donors that uh, uh, make themselves avail or make themselves known, make us aware of it. Um, just being able to facilitate something like that, I think, uh, would please the father, and then also keep everybody off of us um, when it comes down to, you know, trying to. Because uh, you, you're right, if, if just giving out money here and there, who do you know you're giving it to? But if you're actually forming relationships within the giving and receiving, not only do we come closer as brothers and sisters, uh, there is a surety that the funds will be used for what they're intended for. So I think it's a great idea, good announcement, um, and I can't wait to see how well it works and to be a part of it myself. Brother Luke, yeah. on the vetting, uh, the, the concern was vetting, just like any other church, like you said, it's now become an official church. I mean, we are the body of Christ. This is our church. It's the only church some people have. But uh, as far as vetting, when a, a church always helps its members first. And we know the ones that are here week after week. We know them. So I wouldn't be concerned if someone that came here, like Stephanie, she's here all the time. You know, people that we know uh, that are in this church, we want to help everyone we can, like you said. Uh, mm -hmm. But I wanted them to know this is about, th this is for the people that have been here, the members of this church that are here week after week. So they don't need to be concerned that some stranger is going to come in. And you know what I mean? Like, yeah. this is to help each other. This is like Matthias said, it's about relationships we already have and will continue to form. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, and the concern about vetting or uh, uh, attorneys, um, I, I don't think any of that is necessary. As I said, there's no one will know about what's going on except for the two parties involved. So the, uh, well, someone says that they're desperate, they're uh, going to be homeless or something and they need some immediate help. And someone else has already contacted us saying that I'm keep my main name in mind if there's a, uh, some great need and we get the two parties together. And then the donor ha has the right to vet and decide for themselves that this is something that's worthwhile that they, they feel that led to, to uh, help, that's all. Uh, let me get Brother Ben's feedback. I can't really say anything more than what everyone's already said that I 100 percent agree. The only thing I would uh, add is that um, any of you, any, anyone in the congregation who's a financial wizard, because um, I'm, I'm pretty simple when it comes to financial matters, has good ideas about uh, how we can uh, transfer funds to each other um, with, without incurring you know substantial service fees. Um, I know there's different options out there like PayPal, but I, I, PayPal I, I, would be the, the, the bet. If people if somebody's a donor, I would say go ahead and get a PayPal account um, because when you do person to person, it's free. It doesn't cost me any money to just send 
money to somebody and they if get it's from your balance. balance if it's from your balance if you use like an outside card or an account it does charge some sort of fee though oh i got you i got you yeah. right okay, if, okay. It's from your, if your money is already in the account it won't charge you but yeah. if you're like sending it from your credit card to them through the paypal it will charge them. i got you i got you Not yeah. much, though. Always, Not always, much. always sent it from my i've, also, my you wouldn't kick I've sent money on <laughs> facebook messenger before and that's free. Well, uh, it doesn't matter how it's done, but uh, we've been using uh, PayPal, and uh, th there has been a 3% uh, service charge, um, but 3% is, is a small charge for the convenience and, and quickness of it. But uh, if, there's, if there's some other way that the donor and the recipient want to uh, make that exchange, then, then that's, uh, that'd be fine. Um, all right. Uh, Anybody else uh, in the panel here want to uh, say more about this before we uh, go continue with our church program? Okay, and I do think that uh, uh, Matthias uh, uh, continuing to repeat this is going to be very important to make new people understand uh, and, and keep reminding people 